Hello there, good afternoon to you all, and a massive welcome to the channel. The addiction today is all about different tips and tricks to help you make some extra gold in World of Warcraft. So like normal, go grab a coffee and please get comfy and let's get started. This is a tips and tricks video but not like your normal typical run-of-the-mill top 10 nonsense. I would like to take this opportunity to share with you some very handy tips and tricks I have learned over the years. Aimed at both helping you improve your profits and optimizing the speed and process. Some of these tips and tricks will be unconventional, out of the box thinking so to speak where others will be short sweet, basic reminders and to the point. If you find at least one of these helpful in any way then that is the sole purpose of this video completed. Currently in Europe at the moment, our reagent market is completely messed up. A lot of different professions reagents are way below the normal average asking prices and have not recovered now for a couple of weeks, if not longer. It's the same for most farmable items in game across Europe. So as a farmer, we need to learn to adapt to our current conditions, and not rely so much on our normal standard farms for gold. The first area I would quickly like to make you aware of and what many farmers seem to overlook or forget, and that would your character's daily upkeep costs. Blizzard has added many gold sinks into the game over the years to keep the markets and economy in check. But by far one of the biggest gold sinks in game, is your daily repair bill and costs and untold amounts of gold is lost to this necessity every day. Many players buy food and flasks for raids, enchants for new weapons, that toy they have been after for months, new pieces of gear, the list goes on. The point I am trying to make is, taking all your daily upkeep costs into account as a farmer you need to add that into your daily overall profits. As a small example, let's say you only made 10k gold for that day and the time spent playing. But how much did you pay in repair bills or that new enchant, flight path, it all adds up, so you may have thought you made 10k gold, where in fact with the daily upkeep costs, it will be most likely less, just making you aware of this only. Next is a extremely quick and small tip regarding faction rep and grinds in game. Blizzard back in 8.0.1 added the contract system. Basically allowing players to boost reputation gains while doing daily world quests and so forth. They are made by players with inscription or can be brought from the auction house and once used they will last you 3 days, and will give a very small rep gain every time you complete a quest. This may only be a small boost but every little helps when it comes down to rep grinds. This next tip is just a small reminder only but very important. Time is valuable to us all, and being good at time management will help a lot. Moving around the different zones in game can take up time as we all know. There are many toys and gear you can obtain that will help move you around the world of Azeroth. The less time traveling to a farm just means more time farming. Here are just some examples of ways to get around quickly. Extra added tip. Currently on some servers, mages are making some decent gold just from selling portals, and yes in retail, something to think about maybe. One very handy toy is the fractured necrolite skull, from the burning crusade, from the time walking vendor when the event is up. What this toy does is sacrifice a targeted critter in return for a personal portal to the black temple raid, and is the fastest way by far to get to shadow moon valley. As a farmer, this toy is just amazing and is very helpful cutting down travel times, there are other toys similar to this. And I shall leave a link in the description below on a guide on how to obtain them. Next on the list is what I call optimized smart farming. First allow me to say that any player at any time, and with any class can farm for gold in game, that part is easy. However, if you decided to take up farming for gold, to buy a game token, or buy the next up and coming expansion, then you may want to optimize how you farm. This next segment, I would like to make you aware of some techniques and methods I personally use to optimize farming. As stated before, you can farm on any character and class you want, but there are some classes best suited for farming. But one class above all others is just best for farming full stop, and that would be the Feral Druid. The Feral Druid not only has the mobility and speed in cap form, and able to reach movement speeds of 250% plus inside dungeons and raids using a speed set. 
able to gather herbs in flight form and go completely unnoticed in prowl and stealth mode. The druid has one of the best farming abilities in game and that is with the skill called Dream Walk. Certain dungeons and raids in WoW are rather large, and farming them for most classes can tend to be slow. Once you have killed all the trash you then have to run all the way back to the entrance, run outside and then reset the dungeon to be able to continue farming. Well druids can completely bypass this part, having to run back to the entrance of the raid or dungeon, we can simply use Dream Walk to teleport us out to the Dream Grove. The part most players seem to miss is, if you use the skill a second time, after the small 10 second cooldown you will be teleported back outside of the raid on dungeon you was just farming. Cutting out the run and therefore saving you time which you can spend on more farming. If you are farming for gold in raids and dungeons, you really do not want to be stuck in there, wasting time which could be used elsewhere. That is why it's always important to farm on a character ideally suited to that particular farm. On screen now is Firelands, a rather large raid we are able to farm. Due to its size we would like to be able to farm this as fast as possible and in the correct way. This is why a feral druid is just perfect for this farm. It's 100% understandable if you only have one farming character, you must use what you have of course, but if you have several characters in your arsenal, picking one that has the best movement skills and abilities that can help speed up the runs is your best choice if you do not have a feral druid. And for the love of gold just do not be that guy and farm on one of the slowest classes in game being the paladin and unbuffed when you have a feral druid, and ready to go. There are just no excuses for that stupidity, if you are going to farm, at least try and do it correctly so you are able to benefit from the time you spent farming, what is the point otherwise? While farming is the manual labor in World of Warcraft's gold making scene and is looked down upon by many of the game's richest players. It still remains a reliable source of income and an integral part of the in-game economy. Farming also requires no startup costs or investments and thus is always a positive gold gain. Farming is the process of going out into the gaming world to collect base materials by looting, gathering, or skinning. Then either selling them raw on the auction house or convert the materials into better profits. Which leads me nicely onto the first tip of this segment and that would be gold making method called shuffling. This technique has been in the game from the very start and is one of the core principles of gold making in World of Warcraft, and is why it has been coined the shuffle. The shuffle is typically applied to other processes, such as taking raw ore, prospecting it, and using the gems produced to create a wide variety of items. Ranging from enchanting mats, enchanting scrolls, cut gems, jewelry, and many more. On screen now I have created for you the mining and prospecting shuffle chart. As you can see from in the diagram, there are a lot of options for what you can do with the gems that you gain from prospecting. Using this shuffle, you can potentially produce all of different gems in game prospecting the right ores. You can further make gear and tools to sell on the auction house or can be sent to your disenchanter for even more potential profits. Every profession in World of Warcraft has shuffles. The same principles will mostly apply across most of the professions in WoW. Where you are able to gather materials which you can use to convert into other more profitable materials which then can be used in crafts. This is just one variation on shuffles in game. Tailoring has some with cloth, blacksmithing with ore and leather working with skins. You can go further into these shuffles with crafting and flipping rare old world gear, again just giving you more options for making gold. Every farmer in game has their own personal favorite farms they like to do. But let's say you log into WoW one day to find all your favorite farms are not worth farming, due to extremely low prices on items on the auction house and is just not worth the time and effort. What do you do then? Well at times like these is when you need to learn to adapt and try new farming methods and tricks. Never limit yourself to just one method of farming no matter how good you are or how good the profits can be. If prices on items you normally farm are down, have a look at other areas of the markets, as it's possible there are items that are worth farming and are easy to obtain and sell. Again this is just to point out different variations with farming methods, but even fishing can be a profitable way to make gold. You do however need to be quick with this market as a lot of people like to fish in game while doing other stuff out of game, as you can semi-afk fishing with add-ons. 
always worth checking fish prices and jumping on any that are worth the time and effort. The reason I mention fishing is because there is a method not many players are aware of so allow me to show you. There is a rare spawn located within the forbidden reach called Sir Pinchalart. This giant crab can only be spawned by using the elusive croaking crab at this location. The reason this can be a decent gold farm is simple. You are able to fish up the elusive croaking crab at this same location which you can sell on the auction house raw. Or you can use it to summon the rare, this rare has an extremely big loot table with a lot of different items you can make gold from. One being able to obtain coins of the isle which can be used to obtain Otto the Mount, or exchange for recipes in a bottle which again you can sell. Not a bad variation on fishing for gold and something I do a lot lately. Shadowlands also has a similar fishing variation where you are fishing for an item called Strange Goop, which as you can see by the picture has a rather good price tag. And this item does sell as it's needed for a rare mount. So this is just from fishing, there are many other variations for you to explore in your own time, I am just making you aware of a couple of good ones. Not as profitable but still worth farming is Gone Night Howl from Warlords of Draenor, this rare is located in the far west of Frostfire Ridge. Having a character parked here could be a viable option, as once you kill the rare, it has a 100% drop rate to drop the mount which you are able to sell on the auction house. And it only takes less than a minute to do so, so either sell as you get them or stockpile for later use, either way it's another option for you to make gold. Next is just a quick reminder, but still extremely good, and that would be battle pets and server flips. This method of gold making is rather simple to understand. You buy battle pets from one server at a low cost and learn them, then simply jump onto another server and cage all the battle pets you wish to sell and place on the auction house. Doing your research first on prices is always key to this flip but many players make a lot of gold doing this and is worth a mention. Using the website called Pet Magpie will show you what battle pets you have, if they can be sold and for how much, basically doing all the work for you, link will be in the description below. Another small tip and reminder, but have you ever thought about doing treasure hunting in WoW? Using the add-on handy notes, this add-on will show you all locations of open world chests around Azeroth. This chests will contain old world items and gear which you can sell. Now if you add this to a character that has mining and herbing let's say, you can further increase your profits as you can gather as you fly to each chest in the zones. There are many variations you can use with this method of making extra gold while farming, it's totally up to you which ones you link together and do at the time, just make sure it's worth your time. There are so many different options to you for making gold. I just hope I have opened your eyes on a few areas, and hopefully sparked some ideas in you that you can do with your own farms for making extra gold and optimizing them. This was the whole point of the video after all, awareness only. Thank you so much for watching, I really do hope it helps, but for me I really want to go and farm something so I shall wish you all a fond farewell for now. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons and come and join us on Discord, but for now people, like always, stay warm, stay safe.